Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Scott. I'm Jason. And you're listening to this week's episode of Liquid Carnage. What's up, buddy? <clears throat> Nothing, man. I just I, I feel bad I missed a, a big one for you, buddy. What, what happened? Well, it was your birthday last week. Uh, yeah, that was last week. That's old news. That's I know, but you you're know, old now, so I don't I, know I'm if old, you remember yeah. it or not. You got to well, remember it. Someone changed my diapers and gave me my Metamucil, and I'm fine now. I mean, you, you, don't, do, you don't do much for 38. Did you drool a little bit though? Did you get any of that out? A little bit, you know. I, okay. I drew, I drooled some, you know. It, it was, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't the best, you know. Okay, okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. Well, it's good to hear your voice. It's been a great week. Uh, we got, we got all kinds of stuff planned this upcoming weekend. It's the Taco Fest down here in Phoenix, so I'm excited. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be good. And mm-hmm. uh, and then I get to you know hang out with friends and stuff, so I'm excited. Well, that'll be a good time for you guys. I'm heading up to Snow Bowl. It sounds like this weekend, so that'll be uh, another adventure to talk about next week. I've never been before, and that should be interesting. Oh gosh, yeah, with all the snow, you're gonna have a great time, man. It's gonna be well. Fun. I don't snow. I just I just asked if there's a bar. You know, oh, I'm good. gonna I'm gonna borrow our buddy Bennett's snowboard and hang out by the bar. Oh, you're gonna look so good too. You'll look so good. <laughs> Yeah, it's just one of those I've never been. It sounds like a good time, so let's just see what happens. So you're not coming down for Taco Fest? No, I'm not going to make it up for Taco Fest. I got a lot going on, and I just I, little quick day trips are the, are the best I could do right now. It's I, I'm trying to get down for some spring training games after things clear up next month, but uh, life is crazy for me yeah. at work, and the time off, I, I can't leave. My, I have a new position. I can't li- take any extra time off for that right now. It's pretty much day trips only for me for the next uh, couple weeks or so. Wow, that sucks. That yeah. Sucks. You know what, though? It's, be, it's one of those be careful what you wish for. You just might get it moments where I needed a new challenge. They gave it to me. I'm just taking the ball and I'm running with it. I'm having <laughs> a good time. It's just, you know, a lot. If it can go wrong right now, it's going wrong. And it, it's just turning into a perfect storm of learning. Is well, I, looking at it. So a friend of mine recently told me about a podcast called Crime Junkies. Uh-huh. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's a true crimes podcast. And as you know, I love true crimes. Yeah. But um, it's all it talks about basically is murder and uh, and missing people. And but the way that the girl tells the story, it's really intriguing. I really like it. Mm-hmm. But um, but uh, today was a big day in crime history, buddy. Okay. Today was a big day in crime history. So I don't know, maybe three or four years ago. There was a story about a kid who committed suicide. That wasn't a big part of the story, but what was the big part of the story was is that through social media, his girlfriend was, like, egging him on to do it, and then he actually did it. Did he know his girlfriend was the one egging him on? Yeah, no, no. She, he, um, according to the, I, I read the story, and I guess what had happened was he had talked about wanting to commit suicide. Uh-huh. And I think I think my my thought is is that you know there's some people out there that you know they'll they'll you know complain 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 about oh you know I hate my job I hate my boss I hate my job I hate my boss uh-huh. and you'll say at some point well if you don't like your boss and you don't like your job then just quit just do something it. else yeah yeah do something else well I guess this girl took that attitude with this poor kid who has been struggling with depression. And then talking about killing himself, killing himself. And she she literally just said, well, then do it. Do it already. So, You're a loser if you don't do it. So he started doing it. He um, decided that he was going to do uh, carbon monoxide. Uh-huh. He himself in a trunk and um, with the car running. Yeah. And she basically through social media, I guess, told him to do it, do it. Well, he did it. He, he did it. So obviously his family and the state uh, of where they were filed a lawsuit against her. And she just got sentenced today, um, four years later, uh, for I think three years in prison or something like that. Well, that's actually a pretty light sentence, all things considered, in today's world. For, for... Well, it, it got me thinking. Was, like, was it manslaughter? Um, I, I, I don't know if it was manslaughter or if it was like uh, – responsibility of a person's death um it kind of like uh uh, what um uh, i I don't remember what it's called but it's basically you know you didn't kill the person but you were partly responsible for their death Mm -hmm. um and so she got three years in prison basically i thought that was manslaughter but maybe there's a different term for it 
Well, no, manslaughter is if you accidentally kill someone. That's if you accidentally kill someone. So she couldn't get manslaughter because she didn't kill him. Uh Uh, She just basically, you know, talked in his ear and talked in his ear and talked in his ear until he he did it. And I I don't want to make light of the fact that someone lost their life. But it got me thinking, um, should there be some sort of law out there that stops people? I mean, that, that puts people's responsibility of through social media like when you you know well i don't know i I think there should be and if this girl got sentenced to it for three years i think there already is you know it it goes back to the 80s when phil collins wrote the song in the air tonight they they say that's a song about him witnessing a guy being murdered and wow really yeah yeah and he didn't do anything about it and that was i think his way of of talking about it nothing was ever happened about it but you know he saw it and didn't do anything about it. And I think that's, you know, something has to be done. If you willingly know that someone's going to do something like that and you don't, you, don't you have a moral responsibility? I don't know. Cause I mean, I, I I've had friends who, who committed suicide and frankly, I never saw a sign that they would have ever done that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I would think unlike this girl that if I had found a friend who said, look, I want to commit suicide. I wouldn't be, oh, my God, just do it already, okay? Get over it. Even if they're just you – know, you know how teenagers are, number one. I mean, especially the teenagers right now. They're really just – I don't even know how to explain them. You know, they, 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 they want everything right away, and if they don't get their way, they just throw a temper tantrum. They're just immature. And maybe this well, is and, like, and this maybe, one. Yeah, maybe it is because now she's 22 or 21 or 22. And she recognizes now that what she did probably was not the best thing to do. No, I mean, she egged on a, a kid to kill himself. I and mean, that's, that's pretty fucking bad. You know, it's, it's one thing to say, all right, dude, just fine. If you're going to do it, do it. You're not, just, you know, but saying it sarcastically, not that it makes it okay. But one of those, you always talk about it, but you're never going to do anything like you mentioned. I don't think that makes it okay when you keep egging it on and on and on and on, you know. So then, so then, when a kid gets bullied enough that they commit suicide by kids picking on at school and in um, social media, does that also count then the same way? I would think so. I, I would think if you can trace back your, your a kid committing suicide to being bullied on social media and and whatnot, that uh, those kids should be treated the same. This this might have set uh, precedence in case law. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know. When I was a kid, I. I, I was never picked on so mercilessly that I ever thought that that was the only option. Yeah, but we, but, you we know, grew up in a different time, though. We grew up without, you know, people that uh, – the internet, without ways that people can harass you. you know, back in the day, either they lit a flaming pile of dog shit in a bag on your front porch or they called and they hung up. They prank called you. Maybe they gave you wedgies. Uh, as far as cruel as kids were then, they're not, they are not nearly as cruel as they are now. Well, and we talked it on previous episodes that having that social media outlet to push like that is it, it does amplify it to a level that may or may not be, you know, able to handle it. Uh, this particular case was just bad, too, because like she's egging him on. Yeah. According to the story, obviously, and I don't have all the facts other than the story of the reported, but you know, that she was egging him on, egging him on, egging him on. And then finally he just said, okay, I'm going to do it. And like, I'm wondering if, if she had been in front of him when this was going on, if she would have just let him sit there and go. I don't think, I don't think she would have. I, I honestly, yeah. I have to think in my head that if she's egging him on online with us, she's thinking he's not really going to do it. We're, we're just going to go to dinner, the movies later on, whatever. It's no harm, no foul. He's just being dramatic. I have to think that's what's going on in her head at that point. Basically, she's calling his bluff, thinking she's calling his bluff, when in reality, she didn't call his bluff. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess maybe I should research the case more to find out what exactly it was. It does sound like that the courts, though, today were able to uh, show that she was responsible for his death, and they gave her a sentence for the wow. death. So See, they obviously... That's nuts, man. You know. Yeah, I actually, so. I actually ended up watching a, a, a true crime documentary on Netflix right now because there's no football on Sunday, so I have a lot of free time. I take it back. The AAF is on. It's actually a very good team. Uh, go shots! But uh, oh yeah, that's right. I heard that we kicked some ass. Uh, we kicked some ass, baby. But anyway, so I was watching a, do- a, a true crime documentary about uh, this, these two families from the '70s in Pocatello, Idaho, 
where the neighbor befriended this family that moved into the town that moved in next to him, uh, got close with, with the mom and the dad and took interest in one of the, one of the daughters and kidnapped the daughter. And he, um, he drugged her, put her in their motor home and like tied her to the ground or tied her to the floor of the motor home and then ran a, a radio speaker in there and convinced her that, uh, she was abducted by aliens and she was half alien and that she had to reproduce with the chosen one to save their race. And he had not, yeah. And he had knocked <laughs> himself out and cut himself to make him look like he got kidnapped and bloodied. And, um, and, and went up next to her. So they took this motor home from Pocatello, Idaho, all the way down to Mazalan, Mexico, where they were gone for probably about six weeks. The FBI was involved. Uh, they finally got tipped off because the guy, the kidnapper called his brother and his brother called the people. The federalities got involved, and, and they got their daughter back. And the entire time, this guy uh, was using this box uh, to pretend that they were aliens uh, communicating, saying that if you tell anybody about this, uh, about the sexual encounters, the girl was 12 at the time, the sexual encounters, oh, wow, um, the, the abduction, who's involved, uh, your sister and your father will be killed uh, by this alien race. So she, at 12 years old, she was living in fear. Wow. Well, as the story goes on, you find out that um, this guy pretty much he backed the whole family into a corner one way or the other. He uh, he got into he had an affair with the with the mother of the other family for eight oh, months. Geez. Yeah, and then he got the dad to jerk him off in a parking lot, which oh, was the my. weirdest part to me. <laughs> wow, dude, no way! <laughs> he convinced oh. he convinced this guy that it was just just a couple of guys having some fun. No, no, I, and I looked at that and I was like, that's that's bullshit. Like you, that would not happen today. But at any rate, so when, when they found the kidnapper, that they were going to press charges, and eventually the guy called and said, hey, listen, because these are two very prominent Mormon families in Pocatello, and said, if, if you do this, I will tell everybody that, essentially, your wife and I were having an affair, and I jerked you off in a parking lot, and he got away with it. Oh, they they signed the affidavits, and then as the girl got older, he basically he moved away the Jackson Hole, but convinced her to come run away, too, uh, to be with him. And she did, but then she ran away again from there. It was a whole clusterfuck, man. But the moral of the story is, is you're not being abducted by aliens if you're in a 1970-something motorhome. And if, <laughs> if, with a big speaker blaring. With a big speaker blaring. And if somebody jerks you off or asks to jerk you off at a parking lot, as another dude does, uh, you're going to get blackmailed. And don't do it. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. There, there's certain red signs or red flags that I think that any of us should say. As soon as some guy comes up to me and says, "Hey, can you jerk me off?" Yeah. Uh, oh no, oh, Jason. It's, it's just horseplay. It's just horseplay. Yeah. yeah. No it's horseplay. Hey, all the kids are doing it now. No, days, man. All the kids. <laughs> no, it's not. You don't. <laughs> That's not horseplay. <laughs> That's horseplay. Yeah. And, and, oh, good lord. Yeah. I'm sitting here watching this. I was like, "Are you out of your fucking mind?" People fell for this yeah. in the seventies. Man, this is what happens. You don't have internet, you know. This is... No, you know what it is? Is people don't think it's actually going to happen to them, right? You know, you're living your life, dear think, penthouse. Oh, I never happen. thought this would happen to me. And, and when I listened to, I was listening to this podcast, and and you listen to these stories of these murdered people and missing people, and some of the stories are just like that, where it's like, dude, there's that's like a huge red flag. Yeah, like, don't you, you know? know? Don't you get it? Oh my yeah. God! Yeah, no, I'm right there with you. I mean, and so, and you know, then you know, when you listen to those kind of stories, and then you hear the story about this girl, it makes you think. I mean, people can just be like talked into a lot of things that they don't even listen to their own gut. You know, right? They don't even listen to their own inner saying. This sounds wrong. If I had a girlfriend who was saying to me, "Oh, dude, Jason, you just need to end your life, man. End your life. End your life." I'm at a point in my life where I would say, eh, I don't think I'm going to do that. Flag. Yeah. Red like, flag. I, like you're supposed to be encouraging in other ways. Not, not when it comes to that. Now, that's not to say that if I went to an ex-girlfriend that I didn't like and I said, hey, go kill yourself. Um, if she would do it, then, you know, what, what am I? Well, who am I? Doing? Yeah, but that's like an argument. That's a different. That's an argument. Like, hey, go fuck yourself. Or, you, know, you always <laughs> promised you'd go jump off a bridge. Go fucking do it. You know, it's. It's a that's a whole nother context, you know. It's like that's basically you're you're getting into an argument on the next that's that's uh, disturbing the peace. Um, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, and and you know the other thing about these 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 things is yeah, times in the seventies must have been totally different. 
in terms of like, oh, hey, uh, you want to come go get high with me out in the mountains when no one knows where you're there? Sure, that sounds great. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, well, didn't you know? I mean, like, like nothing would be a red flag. Like, hey, I want you to, I want you to sleep in this mobile home. And we're gonna go down to Mazalan, but you're an alien. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna be drugged the entire time. I'm gonna make you think it's part. I'm part of it. You know, and that's that's oh Jesus, criminy. You know, it's I, people. I don't think people ever get smarter, Jason. That's the problem. As 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 a race, I, I think we're getting dumber. And I think that we watch the crimes now, and you and, and, and you see what people are doing on the news. And I real I, I realize I think technology is making us dumber. Except Maybe. except for our listeners right now, um, we do appreciate you using your technology to, to pay attention to us and hitting us up on social media, all at Liquid Kernage on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you want to talk to Tom, our executive producer, who's going to have a lot of notes about this, I can tell you right now, hit him up on Twitter and Instagram, all at Liquid underscore EP. I think that was another question because Noreen and I listened to one of these cases on a podcast together. And I said, you know, I got to be honest, Noreen, I, I feel like I know you pretty well. Don't you think you would sense if I was going out and murdering someone and coming back home and living a normal life with you and, and murdering, you know, like a serial killer, murdering people out in the night? Don't you, don't you think you'd know? I mean, well, what do you think, Scott? Do you think you would know if you, if you were with someone and uh, don't you think you'd have an inner sense like something's not right here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me, something let, is not right. Let, let me preface this conversation switch to I don't think you're capable of it. And, and if you were, I think you'd, you'd let it slip up, man. If you, if you, once you started drinking Crown one night, uh, you would say something. Oh, yeah. I, I'd be a horrible serial killer. Yeah, you'd be terrible. You'd want to brag about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, but, and none of us want to be your accomplice when it comes to that. So we're going to have to turn you in. It's nothing personal. It's just business. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I, I'm with you. I, I would be a horrible serial killer. And, and maybe that's the difference is because that, that wouldn't even cross my mind. Uh huh. It, it, Noreen doesn't worry about well I would sense it or I wouldn't sense it because she was like uh, I, I know you, you wouldn't do that but you think about like Ted Bundy or you think about the like some of these serial killers like BTK killer who like li- had a wife and kids oh, yeah. li- lived a normal life John, John Wayne just, Gacy, yeah, just your yeah. friendly neighborhood clown you didn't get one inkling, one iota I mean come on like I agree like some of these people, it's almost like like they tell them, "Hey, you know, we suspect your husband's killed fifteen women." No, yeah, like, like they're so, they're so shocked. Like, oh, I I couldn't imagine my husband doing that. Like, when did, really? When does he have the time? He only disappeared every night between the hours of six and ten p.m. Exactly. He said he was exactly. at work playing cards with the boys or getting a pack of smokes. Sure, his truck smells like bleach every night. Yeah, That's but it's normal. fine. He's a cleaner. That's it's normal. what happens. He's very neat. He's very neat. He loves he loves plastic gloves. Don't all men? I mean, come on. He's a germaphobe. Everyone carries he, everyone carries wrenches and handcuffs in their car. He, come on. He's a germaphobe. What can I say? I don't. Oh, fuck, man. It's. I mean, it, I, I, th- I think I yeah. think you're right. You would know. Like, like if if you're smart and you have some common sense, you would know. You would pay attention. I mean, yeah. I mean, I can think of a couple. Not not many exes. Most of my exes are really good. But there were a couple exes that I thought she might be crazy. She 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 could be a serial killer. Well, we all know my track record. I'm pretty sure that and I'll get a note about this from Tom, but I probably have a couple in my past too. Like, yeah, you should have known better. And you've seen some of those experiences that you know what? Bullet dodged. They Yeah, bullet dodged. <laughs> exactly. Literally. I looked at I didn't wake up in a ditch somewhere dead. Yeah. Exactly. And, and I don't want to get weird too weird on this, but this is another thing. I guess I'm a prude when it comes sexually, but why do people think being choked out is a cool thing? <laughs> the, the hell did like, we get to get into this? Anytime some murderer tells a person, hey, you know, it's really cool when I take this rope and I tighten it around your neck while we're having sex. Oh, okay. I, I, that sounds fun. I think that, that sounds I, like a fun time. I think that's a little different than autoerotic asphyxiation. Ex- ex- I said that. Right. I don't know. That's a little bit like like choke me, choke me versus here, put this noose around me are two different things. Well, no, I mean, but like this one, this one of these cases, that's what he did. He, 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 he basically talked to him, Hey, let's, let's do this kinky thing in sex where I basically choke you. And they're like, Oh, okay. 
and then of course it gets tighter and tighter and then the person dies it's like uh <sighs> hello <laughs> I'm like why why are you thinking that that's a safe well, thing to do clearly blueberry pancake well, blueberry pancake. well clearly they, they've missed out on their safe word and that wasn't properly explained uh and hank has his own opinion on it. he went running out of the room he's been very quiet listening and um he knows. He knows. He hears it. He knows. He's telling people, pick your safe words. Uh, exactly. That's why dogs are in it and quit it. You know, they go in for 20 seconds and get the hell out of there. That's it. That's they it. They know how those uh, praying mantis do it. You know, uh, I get the it. Woman ripped the head off the guy. I just, I, I'm just still, I'm still a little taking a turn. When we mapped out the show tonight, we, we were going to go in one direction, but how you brought up choking is, was not in the show notes. So. I guess I'm just fascinated with true crime, and I just when I was I kind of put the two together, so we we can kind of get back. On well, track no, well, no, 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 no. I'm curious though, um, since now we've segued onto that, and and you're a true fan of true crime, you know, I, I think as you watch people who do who commit these crimes now, you often find that they're watching true crime documentaries and po- listen to podcasts like it's game film and sports. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because, I'm taking notes. Because how many times have you notes. watched someone say, "Well, you, you watch like a like uh, CSI, whatever," and like, "Oh, I would have done that. I'd have done it like this. Or I'd have done it like that." I mean, we yeah. we spend so much time as a society on these murder police procedural shows, and now and now these true crime shows that we're literally showing people what not to do. Like, if yeah. you want to get caught, do what they do on TV. If you don't, be smarter than what they have on TV. Well, you you watch the Ted Bundy special. I'm, I'm halfway really through, yeah. Think, oh, yeah, but do you really think that would get away? Someone would get away with that today? No, no, no. Uh, there would be was, cameras. He was there would be cameras inside of his car. I mean, yeah. there there would be so many things that you would just never be able to get away. Uh, with. He he was successful based on the era he did it in. If if you look if you look at what he did, and I've I've only made it through the second uh, the second episode because I'm watching with someone, so it's when you have time to watch it. Um, oh, okay. Uh, they they just didn't communicate, they, and they didn't have the ability, or they just didn't have the smarts to talk to each other about the about what's going on, and I, that was part of the problem. In today's world, you can't help but do that. I, I think I think that we have learned some valuable lessons. Is you know, tell someone where you're going. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, make sure that that you have your phone on, and someone knows how to do the find my phone in case you get lost. You know, those kind of don't things. talk to strangers. Well, but that's the thing is, I mean, some of these people that do these kind of things that they, they don't look like stranger. I mean, they don't look like people that would do bad things. Like they said that Ted Bundy did not look like. Well, th- those are famous last words. He didn't look violent. She didn't look crazy. Jason, yeah. I've never dated anybody that didn't look crazy at the offset. Yeah, I mean, they always look good in the beginning. I, I, mean, I mean, they, That's true. She, That's they, were, they true. were beautiful women to begin with. And how they got crazy, I don't know. I, I looked at them, and you were with me sometimes. Like, they can't be crazy. And I was wrong. Hey, sometimes they're, they're really good to look at until they open their mouth. And then you're like, oh, my, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope. Okay, that's going to get a note from Tom right there. Tom marked at 24-something on the, on the notes. That, it was not me that said that. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I think, I think everybody has had that, whether it be male or female, have, have that crazy experience or even an, an offset. I'll, I'll tell you a quick story that – it seems like if something crazy could happen to somebody in the dating world, or even just on, like on, on the outreach of the dating world, um, it happens to me. Like I get indirectly involved, and <laughs> it's it's just weird to me that it's like I attract that kind of crazy. You know, I've got a friend uh, who works who works with me over at, uh, at my job, and we've been friends for a while. We talk here and there, and usually when she and I text now, it's about, it's about football or Instapot recipes. Um, you know, it's wow. yeah, exactly. It's it's very riveting stuff. <laughs> Well, about two weeks ago, you know, I, I was scrolling through uh, one of my social media stories, and and, and she had a, a, a man in the pictures. I was like, oh, cool, good for her. You know, it's, you know, she deserves, you know, to be happy, and, and I'm glad she found somebody. Hope it works out for him. The next day, I get a friend request from uh, said guy, and I look at the mutual friends, and it's only her. I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. That's weird. Yeah. That's weird. That's, yeah. And I just kind of left it at that, and she texts me a little while later and says, hey, can you send me a screenshot of the last conversation we had. And I was like, that's also weird. But okay. And Uh-oh. now I'm starting to put two and two together. It's like, this is, this is not going to end well for somebody. 
So you know, it, the last time we talked was like a week prior. It was about it was about football. It was about the AFC Championship game. And I sent it to her and left it at that. Well, the next day I'm I'm driving to go do something. I, I get a message over Facebook from one of my other friends. They sent me a link, and I up and I have a, I have a message from somebody uh, that I'm not friends with. So I have to approve the request before they know I've seen it. And it's from that oh. dude who sent the friend request. And he's like, "You don't know me, but we have a mutual friend, and and you need to understand that." Uh, she and I are, are, are together now and you have to respect that and I hope you understand that we could be cordial in public together but you're not to talk to her at all yada 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 I was like who the fuck is this guy oh god I was like well that's not going to be a problem because I don't see her number one and we don't exactly hang out so number that's fine and number and yeah. third like I don't think you're going to tell me what to do there fly boy so yeah. now you're poking a whole different bear just out of <laughs> board <laughs> principles so I make it. I was like, "Yeah, I should, I should, I should text my friend and see what's going on." I was like, "Nah, you know what? I should probably call her and just wait till I go to work and just see her there." Like, I'll, okay. I'll go, I'll go out of my way to find her. So uh, I didn't get a chance to the next day, the the, the, the Monday following Monday. Uh, that night, I'm sitting there watching TV after one of our recordings, and she calls, which is weird because everybody, everyone that knows me knows that you don't call unless someone's dead or someone's in trouble. It, yeah, it freaks right. me out. It's it's 2019. Fucking text. And yeah. You know, I, I, I say hello, and, and she starts trying to talk, but the phone breaks up. Imagine that. Maybe it's the house I, I live in that I just – I had bad reception, so I hung up. I didn't think much about it. And I was like, I should call back. I was like, no, wait. I never heard back. And then uh, I go to work the next day, and I'm walking out. And I get, I get someone's another friend sends me a link over Facebook Messenger, and I see you get another message from this guy. And it's, you know, you fucking coward. How dare you? You're immature. And there's like, it was like a book. And I was what? like, yeah, I was like, I'm not even going to read this. This is stupid. Like, I don't even know who the fuck this guy is. But I'm going to, I'm going to call my friend and find out. So I get back to my office and I call her extension. Like, Hey, what's going on? And she's like, you have no idea. I am so sorry. Um, like I've known this guy for a couple of years. We decided we're going to start dating. I left my phone on the table and he started going through it. And like, he was going through all of her personal stuff <laughs> and yeah, dude, it was bad. And she, goes, oh. and she goes, uh, of all the people he caught a hold of, he caught a hold of your name and he just wouldn't let it go. So, you know, I, that's why I asked about the screenshot of our last conversation because I don't know if he was texting you. Um, and thank God, like the night before when, when she goes, when I called, he had me call you on speakerphone. Thank God you hung up because it was nuts. I was like, are you fucking serious? This isn't even worth it. Uh, oh. like, so why does a girl like that hang out with well, she, like And she's that? like, well, I'm trying to send a back. I don't know where the least from. Like, wherever he's back from, I'm just going to end it after that. But I have to, I've had to turn off all my social media and turn off everything because I just I can't deal with this. I'm like, that is wow. crazy. That is the kind of guy that does stuff you hear about on true crime podcasts. Dude, I'm telling you. that you, uh, you uh, Believe me, if you would have answered that call and met that guy somewhere, we'd be looking for you, dude. I don't think I'm so. I, that guy's, like, I've that seen guy's the pictures. freaking weird. I'm bigger than he is, and I'm from here. I know where the mine shafts are at. I know, but you like being choked sexually. And... <laughs> I was gonna take him to the parking lot just tell him it's horseplay. It's fine. Yeah, take him to, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. horseplay. He's gonna steal your girlfriend. He's gonna steal your daughter. Jerk you off. Fuck your wife. And he's gonna, it's, it's, dude, he's gonna, this is all. I know how this yeah. works. I know true crime. Now that I've seen the true crime stories, I know how this works. Uh, and trust me, you know what? It won't happen to me. You never know with that guy, though. I mean, see, that's telltale. We, you know, we had this, remember? Oh, yeah. We, the relationship deal breakers, dude. I mean, this is, this is exactly what I'm freaking talking about, those telltale signs. Now, I mean, we got to be careful, man. Oh, this yeah. out to get us, you know? We got to be careful. Oh, I agree completely. And, you know, it's like, I, I don't worry about me. I'm fine. You know, I'm, okay. I, I stay in my own lane. I'm in my own business. I don't, I don't worry about other people's stuff. What's in front of me is what I worry about. And... You know, stuff like that, to me, it's funny. Like, I have no problem dealing with it because, you know, fuck it. It's not the weirdest thing that ever happened to me. And that's what I told. I had to tell my friends, like, don't be mad, you know, or, or don't feel – don't apologize. It's not the weirdest thing to happen to me over the last month. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is another story for another day. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I just want to leave it with this because I think, I think we're, we're almost out of time. But the, the, this girl in her podcast gives a lot of, like uh, – uh, rules of the road uh -huh. and a couple of them stick out of my mind that i think are just really important for our listeners uh one is um she has a, what's called a, an abduction package uh -huh. that basically if she's ever ends up missing she has an envelope that has all of her passwords all of her codes to get her phone access 
bank account tracking, all of it. She has it all in a note in a, like an envelope. And it's called the abduction folder. Um, and the other thing is, she says, you know what? I think people just, they don't trust their gut and they try to be nice and not judge everyone. If some guy's giving you being a creeper, it's okay to be rude. It's okay to yell at him. And if he doesn't like it, then oh well. Okay, so, well, I agree with all those. That's, that's, that's a very true statement. For the same point, are you that concerned about abduction that you're going to have your own envelope like that? That just seems weird. Like, like and in case something happens, like in case I get hit by a bus or in case this, here's my dogs, here's how to take care of them. Here's that stuff. Not the in case I get kidnapped, because that's a little presumptuous. Well, I, I don't mean kidnapped, I guess. Maybe she means more like missing. Like if you end up missing, like if you go on a date and then never return home, uh, having a folder, maybe that's what she's talking about. Yeah, yeah, not that. necessarily kidnapped. I mean, it is kidnapping, but not to the same level that we're talking about. So, so let me let, let me leave, leave our listeners with this before we, we sign off for this week's show. Uh, it's actually a pretty fun, entertaining show. I'm going to be surprised to see the notes. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> what would you include on your abduction list if you were to have a letter, plan, whatever it is? Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, all at Liquid Carnage. Hit Tom up at Liquid underscore EP on Instagram and Twitter, and and give him your thoughts and opinions on, um, you know what? Just hit him up on Instagram and Twitter. I don't even have a question for him right now because th- this show has gone in so many different directions. So uh, let's end it on a high note. Jason, take us home. Hey, thanks everyone for listening. Really appreciate it. Be safe out there. That's Be right. safe. Tell Be people safe. where you're at. Uh, that was Scott. I am Jason. And as always, if you never know quite what to say, just have yourself some liquid current.